give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Land. Hey guys, it's Melinda from MelindaZ.com. Today is day one of a four-day series about boundaries. So many of you asked me about boundaries and everything from the form of how do I stop being a people pleaser? How can I say no without feeling guilty? How can I say no when I'm asked to do more stuff at work? And how can I stop giving and giving and giving of myself without getting appreciated? Well, all of this has to do with boundaries. So I'm trying to do a quick overview um, just to what boundaries are, and then we'll get into more depth as we go on this week. So boundaries, a lot of us think of them in terms of like a fence, and that's a good way to think about it. But from an emotional standpoint, a boundary is a limit between you and someone else. It is something to ensure our mental and health, our, our mental and emotional stability. And it also helps to create a strong identity for ourselves so that we are not immersed in a codependent relationship. You know, I actually like to use an analogy about the invisible fence for dogs. And if you're familiar with it, it provides um, a, a, a training system for dogs in regard to the perimeter of their house. And it helps them to determine how far they can go without facing a consequence. And it's a matter to keep them safe, to keep them protected from outside elements. But if we think about setting up an, an invisible fence around ourselves, it'll help to keep people at a certain distance away from us and protect ourselves in that respect. It's not a negative thing. It's actually quite a healthy thing. And if invisible fences don't resonate with you, then think about a home security system. But in any of these instances, you have to plan out what zones are going to be affected, um, what the intruder is identified as, things like that. So we need to talk about thinking about boundaries and planning um, how we are going to enforce those. Oh, let me move on. Here we go. Boundaries are guidelines, rules, or limits that a person can create to identify safe and permissible ways for people to behave towards them. And then we also have to decide how we will respond when someone passes those limits. It helps to establish our identity as an individual rather than a group or a couple or a company. It helps us decide what we will and will not be responsible for. And they can be a mental, emotional, spiritual, or even physical, such as like, get out of my personal space or don't touch me. But as I said, they require thought and planning. So here are just some visuals on boundaries, but let's talk about another element of boundaries, which is right here on the on this side of the slide. It, it also prevents us from rescuing other people. Now, what that means is if we see somebody headed for something bad, we sometimes we invest so much of our time, energy, and efforts into stopping that, helping them, and and they may not want to be helped. They may not know they need to be saved. And so we are directing our energy and, and time into something that ultimately is going to be heartbreaking for us because there won't be a definitive result. Therefore, boundaries are a part of self-care. Now, why are they important? All of the self words come into play here. Self-respect, self-esteem, self-care, self-love. Boundaries indicate self-respect. It's what we will and won't do. And this is based on our desire, not obligation. We want to release obligation and do things that, we, that serve us. We want to avoid being taken advantage of, taken for granted or used. We want to draw a line as to where somebody needs to stop with their behavior and then we need to enforce consequences and if a person breaches that line this will help us ensure that we are treated well that we are loved and respected that our best intentions are in mind and we are training other people basically we are creating a user manual for ourselves handing it over and saying this is how you need to interact with me. And people love that. They love taking the guessing game out of it and not having to be psychic. People do very well with direction. So be direct with them. Okay. Boundaries are also indicators of self-esteem. There's a vicious cycle of self-esteem that's negative thoughts, anxiety, failure, blame. There, there's inequity inequities in relationships where one person has more power than the other. We want to promote equanimity. We want to create acceptable limits of behavior that we can say what we think is offensive, demeaning, condescending. We can say, I don't want to be insulted or made fun of like that. That'll make us feel more confident in our decisions, that our friendships are true and authentic. 
and that our abilities are strong because we'll be doing things that we love, that we'll be living our truth. And if we can have that confidence and that self-esteem, we will only find love in our relationships. We will have success and abundance in our life because our energy will be vibrating so high that we will just keep attracting to ourselves what it is that we need and what we want. Also, boundaries allow for self-care and self-love, and a lot of that is really by avoiding the stress, the resentment, the anger, the burnout, the waste of time, the money issues that come with when we are worrying too much about other people. I always tell people, close your investment account, and what I mean by that is we cannot want for someone else what they do not want for themselves. You understand that? And if we invest our time and energy and our emotions into someone else, we're just setting ourselves up for heartbreak because they can't, they need to want it more than we want it for them. So with all this extra time, we get to do other things for ourselves. And now think about it. How many times have you said, if I had extra time, I could go to the gym, I could eat healthy, I could finish my work on time so I could spend time with my family, I could go on vacation. You will now have that time because you won't be preoccupied with things you don't need to be. You will have less stress. You will have more positivity. Your meet, your connections in life will be more meaningful. You'll have more health, better health, better sleep, more passion, doing things that you enjoy. So start tending to your own garden and let it thrive because if your garden is thriving then you are strengthening your foundation that where you can encourage and support and inspire others I don't want you to not help other people I want you to be the best you can be and help them in ways that is part that are part of your responsibility so think about the oxygen mask on an airplane. If there was a crisis, you would put your mask on first before helping others who need your assistance. Take care of you and then you will be prepared to help others in the way that they need to be served and in the way that serves you. So just some more visuals, but we, there are reasons why we don't set our boundaries. And over here on the left, I'm just going to touch on a few of them. We have a fear of what others think and we assume what will happen if we do set up a boundary. And a lot of that has to do with, they will be mad. They will make me feel guilty. They won't talk to me. They'll be disappointed. We need to stop worrying about other people. Those are things, those are things we cannot control. The only thing we do can control is what we do and what we want. And, you know, another thing is a fear of being seen as selfish, but we are not being selfish. There's a difference between that and taking care of ourselves. Lastly, people don't set up boundaries because they don't know where to start. So let's look at that. Right here, number one and two, they go together. Clearly define your boundary and understand why you need it. I'll add a third thing to that too is set up the consequence uh, if, if that boundary is breached. So here you need to pull out a paper and pen. You need to do the work. You need to really think about it. You need to write it down and you need to clarify that definition in your mind so that it's clear and concise and, and you can in integrate that into your daily habits. Third and fourth, be straightforward. Don't apologize and don't use long explanations. It is what it is. Let it be that. They don't need to know the backstory. It sounds like you're lying. It sounds like you're weaving a tale. It sounds like you're looking for sympathy or something else in there. Just say something factually and let it lie. That is that. Use a calm and polite tone. You don't have to get emotionally charged about it. In fact, if you do, it, it takes away some credibility to your boundary and it opens the door for discussion. And we don't want that. We don't want there to be any discussion. Just take it at face value. Number six and seven here kind of go together. So it says, start with a tight boundary that you can loosen up later if you'd like, and then address boundary violations early, basically nipping things in the bud. And, and that is because we don't want to set a precedent that we can't get back from. If you start with loosey goosey boundaries, it's very difficult to tighten them up. But if you start strong, you can let them go as needed. So think about that. Don't make it personal. This isn't a personal thing. This is a fact. Remember, find a support system that understands you, that's going to tell you everything's okay. Don't worry about it. You're doing the right thing. Things are going to be awesome. You just need somebody to reassure you on that. And then lastly, trust your intuition. We all have a little guide inside of us that is telling us what we know to be true. And sometimes we ignore that guide and worry about pleasing other people. So stop. Please the guide inside your head and you honestly will not go wrong. So that's just a basic overview on boundaries. Tomorrow we're going to start with how to say no 
And then on Thursday, how to say yes. That's part of boundary work too. Friday is a mini masterclass on relationships and boundaries and how healthy boundaries create healthy relationships. By the end of the week, I'll have two downloads for you to work on over the weekend. It's a tolerations worksheet and also 33 ways to say no, which is like a script cheat sheet on, on when you're in a situation, what do you say? Uh, and then next week, we're going to work all on forgiveness. So just a little bit to look forward to here at Melinda Z. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.